Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. These are going to be different lessons than anything I have ever taught. And after teaching the Word for almost 40 years, um, it is unreal that the Bible is still exciting, the most exciting book in the world. And we're going to learn some lessons on Israel, and we're going through the book of Isaiah. So, we want all of you that's tuning in to study the book of Isaiah and to see the wonderful truths he has written to us concerning Christ. But we're going to start out with Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the key. Israel is the key to world redemption. Ezekiel 5.5, 5, it is the center of the world. And this is a heavenly divine message. You must always know that. So we start out with Genesis 12, verse 1. The Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Now I want you to memorize all of these seven promises that God gave to Abraham. This is what we are going to be learning in these lessons. And those of you that know that I have a website, it is, you can find all these lessons on my website. And this is exciting to know that God is using these words to go to the ends of the world. That's why we need your prayers. And we thank him for these wonderful truths. And he said seven things, promises, that came to pass. And all the promises that he has given to us in these lessons are going to be fulfilled exactly the way they have been fulfilled with Abraham. The thing that you must understand about Abraham he believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. We must understand that God is in complete control of everything that's happening in these last days. And we can have that perfect faith in God and rest in him. This is the secret to an abundant life. I will give these to you, and then we will pray. Chapter 12, verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. I want you to memorize these, every person that's listening. And I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And this is the most important one for every person that is living today. In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And we are going to see that he says the same thing about every true child of God. And this is why we pray for 100 fold, because you cannot understand these lessons apart from being born again, because we can only worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit of God has to be dwelling in us. We have his divine nature. This is the greatest time to be living that we can give out these truths in the days of apostasy. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear heavenly father, we come before thee today, thanking thee and praising thee for Israel as we are going to learn that in thee 
because of Christ came through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that this is how we are all blessed because of our Redeemer. So we thank Thee and praise Thee for Christ. We thank Thee and praise Thee for being able to come to the throne of grace today to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Thy grace is sufficient for every need. And of all the men in the world that Thou would call Abraham out to come to the land of Cana to give these wonderful, wonderful Israelites the promised land and today, every true believer can receive the gift that came through Abraham, Christ, our Redeemer. All you have to do is to believe that Christ died for you. He rose again the third day. And the crucifixion atones your sin, His divine blood, and His resurrection eradicates our sins. What glory this is for every true believer today to know that we have been washed from our sins in His own blood. Thank Thee for hearing and answering our prayers today and thank Thee for delivering every person that hears these out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto Thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we're starting these lessons, the greatest thing in the world is to know that we are also blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And this is as a child of God, because in Ephesians, he says, Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ in heavenly places in Christ, all the spiritual blessings in heaven and in earth. According, verse 4 now, this is Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Why did he choose us before the foundation of the world? He knew who was going to be saved. And why did he choose Israel? He says in Deuteronomy that we are going to be reading that he chose them because he loved them. He loves us all the same. There is no difference. Every person in the world, he died for you. That's how we are seeing in all families of the earth. I in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You must remember this. And then Genesis 12, 7, the Lord appeared unto Abram. Now this was Abram at first, and then he became Abraham. Said unto thy seed will I give this land. God gave them that land. And every person that's listening today as a true child of God, we are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. He is appointed heir of all things. He is possessor of heaven and earth. And we as a child of God is an heir of Christ and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. An heir of God every person that's listening today. So this promise is for you. You can know this promise today. And you are rich. You are rich. There is not any need for any person in the world not to claim this promise. In Genesis chapter 12, you are the richest and wealthiest person in the world. All the riches of the world belongs to you because you are an heir of God. And then we see in Isaiah 41, verse 27, The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. Remember that happened when he came. 
good tidings, good news, is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now in Isaiah 52, 7, look at this. Why we're why we are going to all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. That is his command to every true believer. Verse 7 of Isaiah 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, good news, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he arose from the dead. This is the good news. That is what we are to give out. That publishes peace. He is our peace. That bringeth good tidings of good. That publishes salvation. This is that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. You see, this is why we are to rejoice every day that he has given us all of these exceeding great and precious promises. And we have lost sight of the word of God. Everything in this book is as pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. This book is a living book. Jesus Christ is a living word. And this is something you must always understand, that this book is the most powerful weapon under heaven. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. When you hear this truth, that your heart is being stirred because that's the only thing that will bring anything to your heart that will cause your heart to burn within you. That's what the prophets, the disciples said as Christ was giving them the scriptures. They said, did not our hearts burn within us when we heard, when he gave us the scriptures? And this is what you're to do. And then this is a voice full of majesty because it's the only living book in the world. And then we see for verily, Hebrews 2.16. Now, we've got to get all of these together, and I don't want to confuse you, and I will have to give you these over and over and over again. Hebrews 2.16. For verily, he took not on him, talking about Christ, the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Now, we're going to find out that Christ is all three. He's a Hebrew, he's a Jew, and he is an Israelite. And we're going to see that in just a few minutes. But right now, how can we be the seed of Abraham, every person in the world? Well, we have to go to Galatians chapter 3 for this. And you must see this and understand it. You see, if we knew this scriptures, there would be no hatred, there would be no jealousy. You cannot hate another person and the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. That's God's word. He says, this is a justified believer, is a son in the family of God. Now you've got to write these scriptures down so you can memorize them and give them to another person. This is the good tidings. So here he says in verse 26, of chapter 3 of Galatians. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ Jesus have put on Christ. Now, he's in us. This is why our body is to be holy and blameless before the world. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Now, listen to this. There can be no jealousy, because jealousy leads to hatred. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. This is, this is the word, and we can't deny this. And this is, there's no controversy, and there's no disagreement. There's no argument about his word. 
And then verse 29. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is what's needed today. This is what God wants us to give out to the world. And then in Hebrews 10.10, 10, we have to go to all of these scriptures because in these last days, we're going to see how many gods, idols, there are in the world. And there's only one true God. That's Jesus Christ. He came as a baby, as the Son of Man, perfect. He was truly Son of God, deity. Now here we see in Hebrews 10.10, 10, By thee which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. Nothing but the blood of Christ. That's, it is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. And then from henceforth expect until his enemies be made his footstool. That's when we're going to reign with him a thousand years on this earth as believers. And verse 14, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Sanctification means that I am one with him. Ye are washed in his blood. You are sanctified. That means sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. This is means I'm one with Christ and you are justified. This is what you need today. What does justification mean? That God has declared me righteous by the blood of Christ, his righteousness. So we see in Isaiah 43, now we're going to be going to Isaiah a lot, and we're going to start on these lessons in Isaiah in just a few weeks. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Can he say today that you are his child? Can he say that? We just saw that we're a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords if we have accepted him as Savior. You see, this is, the, this is something that you don't hear because the world knows nothing of this book. And Isaiah 53, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It pleased his heavenly father to let him suffer for us because it's his desire that we be with him where he is. So as we study these and learn these lessons, you're going to see what God has done for you every day. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. I can't think about anybody aggrieving the heart of God I cannot imagine, and anyone would reject such great love. Abraham's faith was rewarded immediately upon coming into the land of Cana. You see, if you right now, this is his desire, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's his desire. There's no other God in the world. You only know one way. Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So here we see that we are called a son of God through faith in Abraham. And he says, I will bless them that bless thee. So I will curse them that curseth thee. So we must see Satan is cursed. So all cursing comes from Satan. When you disobey God, you're obeying Satan. Every time you sin, you obey your enemy. So that seed promised was Isaac. Now he had to wait 
13 years for Isaac. That was the seed that would come. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 15 and 16, Abram had honored the Lord by obeying him and coming to the land of Canaan. And now the Lord honored him. Then the seed of Isaac was promised. The seed of Isaac was promised. That seed promised that is Isaac. Christ is typified by Isaac. Now we, brethren, now this is for you, everybody that's listening, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We're the children of promise. And then, in Romans 4, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. And he said, and this is why you must believe and have faith in God, and not in things, not in money, not in prosperity. It all comes from him. And he says in Romans chapter 4, this is for every person that is a child of God today. Romans 4, beginning in verse 18. Who against hope, talking about Abraham, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise through unbelief, but strong in faith, giving glory to God, Listen at this, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. This is a supernatural miracle. Jesus Christ was a supernatural miracle. And this is what we need today. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Genesis 15, 1, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Thy exceeding. He's got rewards for every one of us. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Genesis 15, 18, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, Deuteronomy 1, 7, and unto Lebanon. He says in Joel 3, 2, they're not to part that land. They have parted my land. God set the borders for Israel over 3,000 years ago. That he gave them that land. And he also not only gave them the land, but he even divided the parts for the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, you must listen to these truths concerning Israel. The Lord God omnipotent of the universe, the holy land of Israel, is his land. He gave it to Isaac. Jacob. This is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God set the borders on the north by Lebanon, on the south the river of Egypt, and the east is the Euphrates River, and the west Mediterranean Sea have been divinely appointed to Jacob, Israel, and his seed as an everlasting possession. He, the appointed Messiah, now the lawgiver and the judge of all the earth, has appointed Messiah to sit on the throne of David in this land of whose kingdom there shall be no end. To order it and establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even 
forevermore. Unto us a child is born. This is an Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And then you have to read Luke 1, 31. You see, this is where he's going to be reigning as King of Kings and Lord of Lords a thousand years, and we're going to be reigning with him. And he's going to be the King of Peace. That's the only time that this world is ever going to live where there is perfect peace and righteousness, and only believers will be there. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and call his name Jesus. This is Luke 1, 32. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He's coming through the Davidic line. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be be no end. This is what's going to happen to that land. So we see who the Hebrews are. Abraham was not a Jew. He was a, he was a Gentile. He became a Hebrew by coming over to another place. And he, the Hebrews are, the, Christ is the same because he came from heaven, from his father's house. And he's a Hebrew. The Jews are Hebrews. And they also are called Jews because the nickname for Judah, he came through the line of Judah. And this is through Jacob and his son Judah. And he is a Jew because Judah means Jew. That is just a nickname. And then, of course, the Israelites came from Jacob. And that was his son, Judah, that who Christ came through. And this is, he became Israel. That's how Jesus is all three. And this is what you see in these lessons. And I will give you that Bible verse, Hebrews seven fourteen. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. And if you need the Bible verse for Genesis 32, 27, I will give that to you next week.